Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker with Tools. Super excited tonight because it is officially the first birthday of Tinker with Tools as a YouTube channel. That's right, one year ago today, I actually started this with a very poorly done video about a DeWalt drill, but we are gonna go ahead and do a special Q&A today for our one year anniversary, if you will. And hopefully this is the first of many birthdays for Tinker with Tools. Thanks for all your support. Let's get into that Q&A on Tinker with Tools. All right, so as I mentioned, for the for this show, we're just going to be doing a Q&A of some questions that were submitted by you, the viewers. So I appreciate those that submitted questions. If I didn't get to yours this time, go ahead and look for it in a future Q&A. But let's jump right into it. All right, Reba2233 said, How important do you find ergonomic versus power for a tool that you use often or daily? So I think in the tool world, we tend to chase simply power. Unfortunately, that is the main thing, power and speed that most of these tool companies talk about. Um, but oftentimes, if I'm talking about the tool I go to grab when I'm using it, it's oftentimes the more ergonomic tool. So for example, the Makita impact drivers are definitely not the most powerful, not the fastest, but they're certainly one that I go ahead and grab and gravitate towards as I'm using a tool. Now, if I know I'm gonna be doing something that's gonna require that extra grunt, then I can go ahead and grab one of those. Uh, but for the most part, I'm looking at something more ergonomic and that's what I gravitate towards. So for daily use, especially for the work that I do with my tools, it's often something smaller and more common. Um, and so that's when I will gravitate towards something more ergonomic. That's actually why I love 12 volt tools so much is because typically they're gonna be smaller, lighter weight. For that reason, they're a lot nicer to carry around sometimes. All right, and then Kyle Etheridge says, what tool brand was king of the hill in 2022? And which one do I think it'll be in 2023? Well, for 2022, I've thought about this one a lot. I think I'd have to go with the Walt. And I think it just comes down to how impressive certain tool releases they had were and how much they, they kind of reversed the trend from previous years of the stuff put it, they put out just wasn't that impressive. We finally saw a new XR drill. Um, although it wasn't the top XR drill, we did see a new one. And the DCD 800 is a mighty impressive tool. I got my hands on a couple other new tools for them. The DCF 891, the mid torque impact wrench. Still haven't put a review video for that, but it is an incredibly impressive tool. It actually makes it a little bit hard for me to illustrate just how awesome it is. It, it almost makes stuff look boring and how, and how incredibly strong it is and impressive it is, but it is a, a great tool. And then they've had just some other really solid releases that have just kind of rounded things out. So who do I think is going to be next year? I think it probably comes down to perhaps DeWalt um, or maybe if Flex continues the trend of putting out smaller, more ergonomic tools um, and really rounding out that lineup. I think as we see second gen stuff coming from them, I think that's when you could start to see some real improvements into making it a more ergonomically friendly tool brand. I, I know their tools are powerful, they're big, strong, fast, all that stuff. I really like to see them kind of continue to, to hit some out of the park. So I think there's a lot of contenders for who's gonna do it next year, but those would probably be my two top picks right now. Uh, obviously I could be completely wrong, but we'll have to wait and see. All right, Chris Griffin, WordWorks said, not really tool or show related, but what's your day job? So uh, this is not my day job, unfortunately. I wish it were. Um, I think it would be awesome to be able to just review tools all day, every day, and just kind of produce content like this, but that's not what I do for a living. I actually work in business intelligence, uh, so data analytics, data mining, and I work in the financial services industry. All right, and then Stalker uh, said, I've got a question, it's just the one. What's your experience with the Makita warranty service? How easy is it for the average John to get it, uh, get a drill or a broken battery fixed? And then he goes on to some other stuff that we'll kind of get to. So I actually do have some experience with the Makita uh, warranty exchange or the warranty program. I had a drill, the XPH 14, the kind of top tier LXT hammer drill. Uh, the clutch went bad on it. It would not run in, uh, in speed one at all. And so I did actually get on their website, submit a warranty claim. Uh, they had me send the tool back to their service center. I don't have a service center local to me. I'm trying to remember what state that got sent to, but it was out of state for me. I didn't really hear much of anything on that tool other than I was able to check it on the website and kind of see the status of it. And then before I thought to check again, roughly two weeks later, I actually had a package delivered from Makita and it included a brand new XPH 14. So they simply just completely replaced the tool uh, with a new one. 
now I've got that one going in it. So it was a pretty flawless process. They weren't as, they didn't have as good a communication about what was happening in the process as I've done with others. I've also done similar repairs with Milwaukee and Milwaukee did notify me when they received the tool. They notified me when it was being looked at. They notified me when it was resolved and heading back to me. And then they also just replaced the tools with new versions of the exact same tool. So um, I've had experience with both. Uh, Milwaukee's process communicated with you a little bit more regularly, but both of them were relatively easy. And you also asked how long I expect tools and batteries to last. Tools, if you know, if they're properly maintained, you keep them clean, you don't abuse them, you know, they're not falling off ladders all the time, different things like that. I expect tools to work uh, for for a long time. I don't think you're necessarily going to find something that's going to go for 30 years. I don't think that's the way they make things much of anymore. And so I think it's more, you know, I expect to get a reasonable lifetime of five to 10 years out of a tool. But I think, you know, the way if tools are properly cared for, I think they can last quite a while. And I think it'll get to the point where you'll want to upgrade because of the t how much the technology has advanced more than because you absolutely have to. Um, I think batteries are probably more susceptible to aging than the actual tool itself. Um, I know batteries, I would not really expect them under heavy use to go much beyond the warranty period in terms of that because they do just have a limited number of life cycles and batteries are incredibly susceptible to the environment that they work in. So if you let them get uh, cold in the winter or too hot in the summer, all of these things can lead to the degradation of the battery. And so if you do proper care, it'll obviously prolong it but there is a finite amount of time that a battery is going to work. So now obviously the last piece of your question is you talked about, you talked about what happens if you take it out of the home site or like in my shop, for example, take it out on a job site. Well, anytime you're exposing it to more harsh conditions, whether it's more prolonged use, uh, more heavy duty applications, or you're gonna be putting it into an environment where there's more dust, dirt, debris, potentially moisture, obviously that's going to affect it. I think anything's going to give up a little earlier than what you'd expect it to. All right, and Spencer Larson said, which of your videos did you think would be a success and then flopped or vice versa? Um, that's one of the things I've learned in this first year is you can plan for success as much as you can, but there's just sometimes a video just doesn't do well. Uh, there's a number of videos that I thought were going to be better than what they were. Or um, There was a video early on between Ryobi and Rigid for impact drivers that I thought was well done. I thought it was going to do well and it flopped. Really came out of the gate slow and just never really got that much better. Um, there was another video, it was on the DeWalt table saw. I was convinced that was going to be a great video. I thought people were going to watch it left and right. And looking back on it, I could have done a better job on the video, but also it just did not see much exposure on YouTube. And that's, that's kind of the thing is you do just kind of have to take some of those hits and keep on going. Uh, vice versa, there are videos that I thought were going to be awful and I almost didn't publish them and then they turned out to be much more successful than I could have hoped for. Uh, one of those is I did a comparison between the Bosch 18 volt Flexi Click, the DeWalt 5-in-1 and the Milwaukee installation drill and put those three in. Uh, one of them ended up smelling really bad, one of them ended up smoking. You know, a very frustrating video to make and yet it performed pretty well. All right, so then Bethany Lindley asked, when did I develop my love for woodworking? And just to kind of go into that, I actually got into tools because I started doing some casual woodworking and then really just kind of developed a love for it. And that's eventually progressed into using tools for a lot more things than just woodworking. I do have my shop because of woodworking and now it's turned into a studio of sorts for filming these videos and testing different tools. And obviously I've acquired many more tools than are needed to be just a woodworker. But that is kind of what all started me. I, my wife asked me to build a table uh, just over six years ago when we were gonna move into this house that we currently live in. And we got some plans off the internet, started to build it, learned a lot of lessons along the way, a lot of things I didn't know, and just kind of really fell in love with woodworking and dove into it really deep. And that's where you started to see kind of the love for tools. But it's really what sparked all this and what started what is now Tinker with Tools, so. All right, and Stacy Atkinson submitted this question wanting to know what type of drill for common household stuff would you recommend? I think probably I would go with a 12 volt tool. Um, they've gotten to the point where they have sufficient power to do a lot of the things that you're looking to do with a tool. 
but they certainly are by no means uh, underpowered or even oversized. You can get them from a variety of brands. They make 12 volt with Skillbosch, DeWalt. Uh, they have the Milwaukee. Makita has a 12 volt. Uh, so there are a lot of different options to do 12 volt tools. I think it really can be a great option for you. And it doesn't necessarily matter which one you go for, just as long as you go to the store, try it out, make sure that it feels good when you're holding it. Uh, that's going to be something I know the Milwaukee's have a bigger handle, so some people may not care for those. The DeWalt's a little bit more ergonomic, so that can be a good choice to go. All right, now to end, I've actually received quite a few questions from my wife. Uh, she decided that it was fun to submit questions and I have a bunch of them there. So we're gonna go rapid fire through some of those. Um, she said, if you could collaborate with any tool brand, which would you choose? When I started this, I thought the pinnacle would be if I could collaborate and get Milwaukee tools for free, that would be the pinnacle of what I do. And then I was lucky enough to get some tools from DeWalt very early on. That was very gracious of them. What I've learned over this first year is that so many different companies have great tools and, it, and that although we develop these allegiances to a single brand, there's just a lot of great tools out there. So really, I would take just about any of them at this point. So then the last one, she says, what's your favorite thing about your wife? Well, obviously there's a lot of things that I love about my wife, but one of the things I've been really grateful for in this first year of YouTubing is just how supportive she's been. Um, she doesn't really get sick of me saying, hey, I'm gonna go down and film tonight. I often will film, you know, after we put our kids to bed, just try and go down and film for a few hours and get something done. And then obviously there's, there's hours dedicated to editing and doing different things with the channel. So she's been incredibly supportive there. And I really could not have done this without her and the support of my other family members. So I really appreciate every one of you. All right, so thanks for all the support over the first year. I really appreciate all the different people that have commented, liked, subscribed, viewed the videos. I really enjoy making these videos and I hope to keep making them for a long time to come. Not just because I could keep testing and reviewing great tools, because of the interaction that I have with each of you, the viewers, I really do like that. It's one of the things that makes this all worth it. So I really appreciate the support. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you have a question or a comment that didn't get answered in this one, go ahead and leave that down below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It really helps to support the channel and I appreciate everything you do. Until next time, I'll catch you on Tinker with Tools.